Make sure to check out all of our authors on social media. You can find links to their profiles in the description box. Make sure to follow so you don't miss any bookish updates. Hi, welcome Hi. to Wednesdays with Writers. I'm Amy Prokopis. I'm the author of the young adult novel, The Arena. And with me today, I have K.A. Riley. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about yourself and your journey to, to publishing and stuff? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just the, just the whole story, right? The whole story from the very beginning. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with K.A. Riley because I, in past, I, I started publishing in 2013. I started publishing as K.A. Riley in 2018, so that's where we'll start. Um, I write mostly young adult dystopian novels. The, the, my best known um, series are The Conspiracy Chronicles, which start with recruitment, this book, and The Cure, which starts with this book. Um, I've written 37 novels. Uh, I've got two more coming in the fall. I've got one coming at the end of this month. Oh, what else can I tell you? Um, oh it's God. been a journey. <laughs> it's been very interesting. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I'm kind of envious of you because I'm just starting out. I have, I only have one book. It's been like a work in progress for years before that, of course, but um, I didn't jump into publishing until about a year ago. It's, well, it's about a, it's a year since I've decided to publish The Arena. So it's my first book and I also have one coming out in the fall and we publish, uh, we write a lot of the same kinds of genres. The arena is also sort of a young adult dystopian. So I am super excited to, ch to chat with you about like everything genre related because I haven't had anyone on here that has, has written anything similar to the arena. So Yay, that's okay. cool. Yeah, and I want to I learn more about the arena because I haven't read it yet. Gosh. I will. I will. Uh, <laughs> the books are on the way. So I, ha I also have not read yours yet. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. We'll just uh, give a synopsis of both. <laughs> right. Yeah, what, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. What made okay. you go, what made you decide young adult dystopian? Um, the, the young adult part, I've always written in that genre. Um, my day job, I'm a school counselor, and before that I was a high school teacher, so I've always worked with mm -hmm. that age group, and so it just seems, it just seemed natural for me to write in that genre. I've, I don't know if I'll ever write outside of that. I think it'd be fun to write like maybe some things more for adults, but I just think there's so much more to explore with young adult because it's such a, it's such a age of finding yourself. That's yeah. always a theme, at least yeah. to some degree in young adult books. And I adore that trope. I'll never get tired of it. Mm -hmm. um, the dystopian part came in kind of as an experiment. Okay. Usually I write fantasy. I really like fantasy. I, I live in that world. That's my whole wheelhouse. Um, and sci-fi and dystopian is not so far outside of that. But mm -hmm. I wrote the arena sort of as um, I was trying out some new writing techniques a little bit. I was trying a new style of voice. I usually write in third person or at least before now. Right. Now I write mostly in first, per in first person because I, I found it to be just easier yeah that fits, fits the genre are you I writing in present does. tense as well what you write in present tense as well oh yes yeah yeah that's, yeah, well, that's right well, just, you, can't, you can't let people know if your main character is gonna live <laughs> and if they're writing right. in, they're gonna assume right. you're alive at the end sorry readers i get a lot of um threatening dms when um people are worried about characters or when no. Bad things happen. <laughs> oh no! Bad things have to happen. That's kind of how you grow, right? You grow well, through yeah. experience. You know, it wouldn't. It yeah. would be a utopian fiction if everything, if it was all good, right? So you're right. There's always right. going to be. And those good. aren't popular. <laughs> <laughs> They're not like dystopian. <laughs> no, no dystopian. Well, it's, I just I was asking you because, um, of course, Hunger Games and Divergent, you know, and so on came out years mm -hmm. ago, and they were so popular. Oh my gosh, yes. When I first started thinking about doing dystopian, um, I wasn't 100% sure that there was still uh, a hungry audience out there for it. But right. it, yeah. it felt also like, it just felt like the right thing at the time. 
and mm -hmm. uh, and it turns out there is an audience. There's a huge audience. So oh, definitely. Helps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love those books. So I'm dying to get yours. Oh, <laughs> such a cool series, and your covers are gorgeous. Oh yeah, my design is so cool. Fabulous. Yeah, Sylvia Frost, who did this one. Um, she, I just gave her a brief and she just ran with it. And the first thing she designed, I just went, that is perfect. That's amazing. That is the one. Oh my gosh. Well, how would you answer that question? So why dystopian for you? You said that it kind of felt right at the time. Has yeah, that been all you've yeah. ever written? No, I've written in past, I've written romance um, mm -hmm. and sort of more adult romance, new adult or, or just basically yeah. adult romance. But um, part of it is, so oh, I can get into all of this. I may as well. Um, so back in 2013, when I started publishing, the, the landscape was really different. And you've probably heard that back. It was sort of the golden age of publishing, especially for Kindle. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were buying Kindles and they were empty, uh, empty devices that needed books. And at that time, you could put books up on Amazon. And I, this is going to sound a little cynical, and I don't mean it to. Um, you could literally just sell anything with any cover, with any amount of editing, and you would make some money. There was no, you didn't add, there was no advertising on Amazon. There was, there were no Facebook ads. It, it just wasn't a thing. So you would just put books out and you would make money. And then the world kind of caught wind of all this and Kindle started filling up. So readers started becoming a little more fussy about what were they going to spend money on and put, you know, erase another book to supplement their Kindle with this book. Mm -hmm. um, what happened with the the romance uh, genre was the market got super super saturated and it was it's always been saturated and there have always been really voracious readers so there there's always a readership but it became harder and harder to gain any visibility and i was recognizing this and um and and plus i was burned out mentally um because it's a genre where you're you're not writing the same story over and over again, but you're, it's, a genre fiction is always, there's a formula to it, right? Yeah. And I wasn't really wanting, and like you, I, I fell in love with reading when I was young, and I had always wanted to write young adult fiction. And um, I was thinking, okay, I, I, I want to write something that maybe hasn't been done in a while, but um, that, yeah, maybe I can find my people. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's when recruitment started. And then I, you know, you never know how your how a book is going to do, right? And then it did well enough that it was like, okay, to you know, finish the trilogy. And then that trilogy did really well, and so I went, oh, I'm gonna write more. And that's kind of, as you know, it sort of has that how the business works. Um, yeah, we we figure out the market and we figure out what we can and can't do. And sometimes you're writing out of love, and sometimes you're writing as a business, and sometimes you're doing both. And so this has been an endeavor that's been mostly out of love <laughs> um but it's been a really massive wonderful thing that it's actually helped that's it's done so well uh at the same time i've been really grateful and, and the readership is really loyal to the characters um i i get people you know sending me notes that they named their bunny after one character or like um Gosh. yeah you know <laughs> somebody getting a tattoo of a of a cover or anything oh. like that it just, it's such an honor when I hear things like that. Because um, it would make a good tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually one of the later books in series that I had a message about that one. But I actually want this on, I want this tattoo. I love, I love that one in particular. It's so yeah. pretty. I, yeah, and I, it's got like the, the spray paint dripping down and everything. I sort of want it. I don't, I had just had to figure out where on my body I want it. So, it so when I get old, it doesn't just. Uh. You know, literally be dripping yeah, yeah. so um so we'll see i mean we'll see i may or may not do it i'm just <laughs> just thinking about it but oh man yeah so yeah so anyway it just um everything kind of fell into place and it became a dystopian world for me but i am releasing a, a high fantasy adult book in the fall under mm -hmm. also under this pen name which will be interesting because i'm going to have to talk to my 11 year old readers and tell their parents to maybe not buy those but that book you don't get that one. Oh my <laughs> gosh do you have a or, title yet what's that do you have a title picked yes that, that one's called the kingdom of scarred um and that's the beginning of a series uh and the series is called right now is called the war of the five realms 
Um, and so we'll see where it goes. Uh, and right now I've got a trilogy uh, scheduled for that. Uh, I, it may expand beyond that. I don't know if my attention span will hold, but we'll see. Oh um, but before that comes out, I have uh, a darkly comedic <laughs> young adult apocalyptic <laughs> novel coming out um, called Apocalyptics, which is- I saw super, that. Yeah, That's it's, so it, cool. it's going to be fun. <laughs> It's pretty wild. It's just, it's like comic relief after years of oh, living man. completely, you know, wrecked dystopian worlds. So wow. it is a world that is in the process of getting wrecked, but at the same time, it's kind of hilarious. And there's a, there's a golden retriever in the book. Oh. So, <laughs> so, so my real life buddy here is- I was going to uh, say, just like your puppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the inspiration. So that, oh. that's, it's kind of fun to get away. Yeah. Dark humor is, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. I can't help it. I can't help myself. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, I've just. So how are you finding working? Oh, what was that? You go ahead. Just gonna say, how are you finding working and raising kids and, and writing at the same time? That has definitely been a challenge. I do, I do a lot of things um, based on seasons. That mm -hmm. seems to work best for me because with my job, there's certain times of the year that are busier than others with my day job. And so I try to structure um, like the books I'm writing around those times. So when we're, when I'm busiest at my day job, I'll be doing maybe the editing side, something, some, something small that I can do like maybe an hour here, an hour there, rather than needing to like sit in a story and really draft stuff out. I do a lot of my like actual writing in the summer, early fall and late spring months mm -hmm. is when I do a lot of that. Yep. I'm trying to adjust my schedule so I can do a little more. Yeah. I mean, that's the dream, right? Is to be doing more of that. That's the goal. I guess the goal for me to try and transition slowly more towards the writing side of things and a little less at my day job, but yep. it definitely makes it challenging with having a toddler running around. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, remember, I remember just having the puppy running around and trying to get any work done, and it was just oh, constant uh -huh. attention, attention, attention. Yes, uh, it's the, yeah. pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Right, and, and then everyone asks you, why don't you just do it while they're asleep? And it's like, because I have to sleep too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I kind of I kind of need a break by that point. <laughs> oh. Well, just I, since I'm just starting out, I definitely think you, you talked a little bit about like making decisions from like the heart and what feels right for like the story at the time, but also the business side. And I knew going into self-publishing, especially that there would be more of that business side of things. I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. I kind of enjoy doing like the marketing side and um, really like seeing what's doing well out there and trying to connect with those people. I thought, I didn't know if I would enjoy that, but I kind of do. But there is a whole lot of the business side that goes into the writing part of it that I think a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Um, yeah. And I think it's something that I see people arguing, like, especially on Twitter. Twitter loves to argue about this stuff. But um, <laughs> Because you'll have one person come along and say, but shouldn't you be writing just for the passion of it? Right. <laughs> and, and, and that sounds so beautiful and wonderful. And then it's yeah. like, well, yeah. I mean, I know lots of people who write for the passion of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is my business. This is my job. This is how I feed my family and pay the mortgage. So I got to think about the other side too. And, and if we deny that it exists, then we're not doing anybody any favors. And especially for new authors, like for an established author to say, oh no, just write whatever you want. Um, the, the truth is I would never give that advice. I would, my advice would always be study the market, look at what is selling, um, do not copy them, but figure out what the structure is and what the tropes are that readers are hungry for, especially if you're on something, you're, you're on book talk, you know about this. Oh yeah. Uh, people yeah. are constantly, <laughs> saying, especially for romance, they'll say the one bed trope, the one horse trope, the yeah. enemy of the lover's trope, the, you know, and they will list literally what they want. Uh -huh. and create a recipe of a book based purely on the tropes that are in demand and you can create that book around those tropes and you will probably sell that book 
mm-hmm. by just saying these are in this book. And you know, it, it's I'm not saying the book doesn't have to be good. I'm not saying it doesn't have to have a great cover, be edited well. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that is really important. But if you write a book about, um, I don't know, uh, phew, zombie lemmings who um, <laughs> eat pasta all day long, then and, and don't understand why it's not selling. But the reason is probably because you're not writing to market. And writing to market, I've had a lot of people, especially new authors, ask me, "What does that mean?" Um, and it's something I didn't, I didn't even know that expression for a long time while I was writing. And of course, it means looking, like you say, looking at what the market wants, looking, going on Amazon, looking at the bestseller lists and figuring out the common denominators of, you know, what, what is the, 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 the thing that everyone wants. And yeah. the thing that everyone wants is to be entertained and to be taken out of their lives. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. It's escapism. Exactly. Yeah. And, and want it can, to something else. Yeah. And it can be miserable. I mean, it can be like the most depressing book and it's still escapism. Like I love watching <laughs> murder documentaries oh I, I'm gosh, one of those, me too they're so bleak <laughs> right I'm one of those people and <laughs> it's, it's so horrible. different than my life <laughs> <laughs> it's horrifying it's awful yes I can't stop watching it and I'm going why why is this entertaining for me I don't know <laughs> but at the same time maybe it's because it's so outside of my life that it seems so completely unreal um and you know and I'm writing depressing well I mean I mean, they're dystopian. There's, yeah, there's, there's yeah. humor, but there's also a lot of, you know, sad things that happen. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I want to escape. Like last night, I was watching, I was binge watching Heartstopper. Have you seen it? Oh, I haven't started it yet, but I want to. It's so great. I've heard it. Really <laughs> I'm so sad that I was so late to this particular party, but man, it's good. It's just oh. so beautiful and sweet and like the best romantic tension between two characters that I think maybe I've ever seen and I just love it it's so um so that that that's another thing that just feels like oh so when I get an email from somebody saying you know your books have helped me to um deal with something you know I I'm a victim of this and and when I read your books I don't I don't think about this thing um that to me is like a better reward than any sales or any numbers or any whatever it's it's like it, that's what you want to do for readers, right? Um, you oh, want to absolutely. give them, yeah, give them an experience that feels like they're traveling outside of their own head. And so, um, so, so yeah, so that's that's great, but uh, but it's also not a hundred percent necessarily writing the market. So it's a combination of all of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you say, like one of the big things, and one of the things that um, Sylvia, who did this cover, um, talks about is that she. Um, makes a habit of going and figuring out the covers that are the branding that is selling well in this moment. So whenever she does a new cover, she's always aware of what in that genre is doing really well. And it's the same thing for writing. Um, You know, Tolkien is one of my favorite writers. I love Lord of the Rings, but I, if you wrote in his style right now, it would feel really dated. You're right. You know, whereas Sarah J Maas writes in a much more modern style and now she's incredibly popular. Mm-hmm. So um, there's all of this stuff to take into consideration when figuring out what you're doing. So, yeah, you're so right. <laughs> yeah. I come from uh, like a very. I have uh, an English degree. That was actually how I got started into my career. I don't have any like teaching background per se. I have all the academic sides though. So I studied English, creative writing. And I remember a lot of the, um, like the tech, not so much the technical writing, but the like creative writing side of things that was being taught at the time, at least when I was in school was don't like fall into tropes because you want to write something outside and something so different. And, um, like the style was so different. Like they, it's very like grammatically focused and everything needs to, to be exactly per se, like correct and structure and style. And that's not really the way creative writing actually works. No. And so as I've grown as a writer and, and kind of loosened the reins from that background, I'm, I realize the same thing that you're talking about, like the market, they're telling us exactly what they want. And it's those tropes. They yeah. want to know like what to expect from a book. They want to, they want a, a nice fluffy romance or they want the enemies to lovers, which is so big right now. And 
they're telling us what they want so exactly and and one of the things i've noticed over the years is when you're looking at other people's reviews because i don't tend to leave my own reviews very often but when you're looking at reviews and you're looking at um what people talk about it tends to be story and not writing style if the writing style is really jarring then people will comment on it but most of the time they won't say this writing is very pedestrian and this sentence started with the word and which everyone tells you not to do right um, they <laughs> it's the story was it kept me on the seat, uh, the edge of my seat, or the story made no sense, or whatever. But it's it's always about were they satisfied with the story, um, and that is something I think a lot of writers, including myself, tend to be perfectionists, and we can't afford to be perfectionists because there's no such thing as a perfect book. By the time you publish your book, if you've tried to make it perfect, it will probably be a mess <laughs> because it's it's too structured yeah. it's too rigid it's too whatever so the, the key i think is um make it feel like uh you're part of the conversation you're part of the world and the world is not we don't talk the way people taught us to oh, talk no. in creative writing class they, we, we yeah you know it's it's so formal and um and I mean, I appreciated all those courses and, you know, the Chicago Manual of Style and all that stuff, but I completely uh -huh. ignore all that now. Much, yeah, me too. I've tossed a lot of my, like, formal training out the window and just kind of go with, in that part, I go with what feels right for the story. Exactly right. Yeah, right, right. yeah me too. Yeah. Oops. My dad, my dad's an English professor, so oh, it was, uh -huh. you know, some of that stuff. Um, but he's even gotten over it, you know, like, because he reads my books. Oh, and my he, <laughs> at first he would sort of point out things well you know you should be using weather in this instance instead uh -huh. of it. and it's a teenager talking and i keep thinking well I, i'm not sure the teenager would talk like that and every now and then i throw him a bone and i'll switch a sentence around and then but he's kind of <laughs> learn to sit back and go you know what you're right that's how the kids talk these days you're, yep. you're you know 15 year olds not so formal in their i mean if we wrote like 15 year olds talk, it would be hilarious actually. But oh, that would be quite. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a lot more swearing in my books, but uh, oh my gosh. Yes, that's one thing, one thing I keep out of my <laughs> YA is uh, I've learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> yep. Dropping the F-bombs. Um, yeah. Tell me more about one of, I want to hear more about your books. Oh. <laughs> yeah, especially okay. like your upcoming releases. All right, well, uh, Apocalypse Chicks takes place in a private school uh, situation, and um, it's the beginning of the apocalypse. So a lot of apocalyptic stories, of course, take place after everything has gone down, but everything's starting to go down. And this um, sort of illness is hitting people that is making them a little psychotic, and mayhem <laughs> ensues. Uh, and... <laughs> the protagonist's dog, service dog, disappears. And uh, and a lot of it is the, the search to reunite herself with her dog, which uh, is an angle that I think not a lot of apocalyptic stories take. Um, but there's, you know, there's some romance, uh, there's a lot of humor. Uh, it's, uh, there's some, um, with the pop culture references, uh, probably slightly inspired by Ready Player One and that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love things like Stranger Things that harken back to yes the eighties and the, the uh -huh. time. I'm old. I just turned fifty, so I I that was my era. I grew I you know I was born in seventy two. I grew up in the eighties, and those are my people. That was my hair in high school. Oh <laughs> so I, I I was Nancy. So I'm I'm watching this, and I'm you know this is it all influences my brain, um, and then. A Kingdom's Guard mm -hmm. uh, is, huh, how to describe it? It's, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, the, the protagonist is a young woman and she has strange scars on her that she was told she got what, uh, during a fire when she was a very, like she was about a year old. And um, she's always just taken this for granted and we start learning more about her. Um, there is a, the, the, the setting for it is inspired by a place where my husband and I spent two weeks last year in the Dordogne in France. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing called the Valley. Uh, some people call it the Valley of a Thousand Castles. And the part where we, we were is called the Valley of the Five Castles. And during the Hundred Years' War, there are these five 
castle spread out, uh, we're doing battle. And the one, we were living in a house right next to this huge castle. We didn't know when we rented it. Um, and it was the only one uh, possessed by the French that was not taken by the English during the Hundred Years' War. And it is on a, it's on a huge high cliff. And I was just so inspired by this setting um, and the, the isolation of this, this castle compared to the other ones that I set my town down below. And there is this realm that is not accessible and hasn't been accessible for a thousand years um, because this is uh, this mist and these protectors that keep mortals from getting up there. And the legend has it that there are these amazing creatures who live up there who have now been separated from the mortals. And so that's where it all starts. And from there, it goes a little wacky. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's got the, it hits the tropes. It's got the enemies to lovers thing. Uh -huh. Um, and uh, I'm really, really enjoying writing it, but I'm, I'm keeping a lot of it under my hat uh, because I'm going to kind of give away snippets of it on book talk as I go. And um, okay. yeah, so I'm really, it's, it's, it's a fun process to, to kind of compose it's And it's also talking about, you know, finding time to write. I like to write things. I like to write multiple things at once. Um, oh, they, okay, yeah. They, because my, my brain doesn't want to just focus on one thing, and, and it's part of how I put out X number of books a year, because I'm always overlapping, you know, I'm editing one while I'm writing the other, and so on. Yep. And so this gives me a very different trajectory to take my brain into than apocalyptic or dystopian, mm -hmm. which is really fun too, yeah. So, looking forward to that. I can't wait to release those two books, though. I'm I'm super excited for them. I think that I lo I love the the humor, the dark humor, like comic relief that you talk about in the. I think it'd be good timing for the two. You've got the serious, yeah. big like fantasy story happening, and you've got this kind of like funny. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Yeah. I'm super excited for it to come out. The more that I read about it as I was researching all of your stuff, going through all your books, I think it'll be really fun. Oh, good. Well, I. I hope so. I mean, yeah, I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun writing. Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited about it. It's always it's always scary to put out the first book in a new series. As you know, like it it just feels you never know what's gonna happen. Um yeah. if it'll take off or not. Um and sometimes you don't know if it'll take off until you've put out a couple of books in the series. Mm -hmm. But um but I, I have faith. Uh, I have faith in these ones and, and uh, not just faith, but I'm really excited about them. I'm just trying not to be too excited. Um, but I, I can't wait to share them with the readers. It's going to be so great. I'm also going to do a big arc giveaway for these two books, which I don't usually do. I don't usually do arcs these days, but yeah. I'm going to do an experiment where I just gather as many arc readers as I can get my hands on and just hand them out and just see how that goes. So. There's something really special about having an arc. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I don't know what it is. It just feels real, like exclusive. It's kind it of does. And also like a lot of arcs are not the final, final, final book, right? Yeah, so, they change a little bit. So you do have yeah. like an exclusive edition. Yeah, you get the typos that nobody else gets to see. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm really thrilled about that. And I, I posted a video a while ago asking, you know, mentioning something about arcs that I'm not gonna exclude people for not having followers. Yeah. I could a number of people who responded to that. I was just blown away. So I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to add them all to my list and just send them all. Uh, out. Like absolutely. if there are a thousand of them, I'm fine with that. So the book talk community has been so welcoming, right? It really is all about like just the love of story. Yeah. It's so it's such a fun environment. I'm having a really good time on book talk, which yeah. is how we met and how yeah. I found all of your books. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, yeah. And, yeah it's it's a really supportive community i i have not had any bad experiences on book talk um <laughs> which, which i can't say of any other social media platform like um yeah yeah it's yeah, it's, it's more really more kind words than i have negative which is not oh common yeah. on the internet yeah yeah <laughs> not at all <laughs> well, like within about two days of joining tiktok i remember a reader saying to me if anyone's ever mean to you i will come for them and i just thought okay that's that's loyalty. <laughs> People's been <laughs> yeah, they're really sweet. Um, yeah, and I, I found it not just loyal readers, but just really good friends on on TikTok. Like mm -hmm. amazing people, just kind people. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. I don't know if you saw, but I last night put up a little video of my dog playing with two other dogs and, and um, yes. I was laughing this morning because it went totally viral. <laughs> That's great. I'm so glad that these dogs are viral on my page and now I have a hundred new followers who all think I'm going to give them so many dog videos. <laughs> I and did see I, that video and then your your posts afterwards too where you discussed <laughs> that. I saw that too. <laughs> I was laughing so hard and just going, yep. Oh my gosh. That's how it goes. But I, I uh, so next time I do a dog video, I got to strap all my books to him and just send them out. Right? In the <laughs> By the way, I, I write books. <laughs> dog is covered in books. You wow. never know. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I mean, I really, I loved it. I loved I loved having people see that video. I just I thought it was hysterical that um, that they were following me and just going, "I'm so sorry." <laughs> it's so funny the things that that'll take off on on TikTok. It's such a an <sighs> interesting platform. There's no other social media that functions like it at all. Mm -mm. It's so cool. Wild. And I keep wondering how long it's going to last. But as long as it lasts, oh. I'll be on it. Yeah, I I never wanted to be on it. I like showing my face was not a thing. Same. I, I started out with like just showing the books. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm never gonna do that. And then it was just ah, oh, whatever. And yeah. Like because it, yeah, it was not a comfortable world for me at all. And then it just became a thing. But it's so much fun because no one, if you're if you're an author, no one is judging <laughs> judging you based on your, you know, what your hair looks like that day or. You're right. Yeah. It's it's been a really good time. I feel like I've grown a lot in like my confidence even a little bit just putting myself on the camera a little more it's gotten to be more comfortable and it's been it's been a fun journey and i've connected with so many writers like you and um it's definitely yeah grown a tribe for me of people that i've, I've definitely learned from like you watching your videos and this conversation and mm -hmm. other authors that are putting out books and have different experiences i've grown so much just in the last uh, oh gosh, I guess I've been on book talk maybe a year. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I feel the same. Like, I have to. Get, I can figure it out. Sorry about my coughing. I have this cold that keeps coming back. <laughs> that, oh man. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten I've gotten this far without cracking, so I've been pretty proud of myself. Mm. Well, I think we're about out of time. I think I have about like three minutes left, so we're gonna have to start wrapping it up, but. I will definitely include, like your book talk, I will include all of the social media that you sent me. That'll be in its own little like card in the beginning of the video and in the description. Yeah, right. well, thank you so much for joining me. This was so much fun. Oh, me, yeah, I had a great time. Thanks. Yeah, I'll see you around. Bye. Bye. <laughs>